are freaking at the Freaker's Ball right here, right now. Good song, huh? <laughs> anyway, welcome to Freaker's Ball. It is Friday night here, June 29, 2018. The last Freakers for June. Yes, indeed, the second Freakers of summer of this particular year in time zone, time frame. And we are live on RealLibertyMedia.com. That's right on channel one there, or you can go right on over to vonlive.tv slash Real Liberty Media and catch it there. But and if you do that, you still got to get in the chat, in the chats there on the on the channel one page, or if you got your own IRC client, do it, do it however you like, really. Hello, Moose Girl. Hello, give me here. <laughs> Can you hear me? I hear you fine. Yeah, you sound good. How do I sound there? You sound wonderful. All right. you. Great. So, anyway, just uh, telling people, people, pee -pee? <laughs> pee -pee. people, hi and howdy <laughs> and all, all those wonderful things, wherever you may be listening, if you're on the audio stream on rlmradio.xyz or reallibertymedia.com, or if you're checking us out from Freedoms Network. Yeah, freedomsnetwork.com. I've been, I've been doing a lot of work over there this week, I'm trying to get things arranged around, and it, it, may, it, all, it all may be for naught, really. I mean, if if, if people don't uh, chip in the in the dough. <laughs> in the for Freedoms Network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, we had a little uh, one, one of our one of our our, our uh, login plug-in thingy. Uh, they they decided to go commercial. And so I had to rewrite a bunch of code and, and rearrange things, and then I found some other stuff that needed to be done. And Anyway, I spent like three days working on the site. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, hopefully it's all good. Uh, so, anyway, w welcome to the Freedoms Network, people, if you're over there. If you're listening yeah. to us, um, not on mine, because... I'm sorry, I just, I have not logged into Freedoms Network. Um, I don't know what it is, I just... Doesn't do much for me, I guess. Sorry to hey, say, you know, there's not a lot of active folk over there. But there, that's what that's what I'm saying. It's just not a lot of. It's just not very active of a site. I mean, well, and 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 if like you, other people say, well, there's not a lot of active people. I'm not going over there. Then there's not going to be a lot of active people. <laughs> right. Right. Oh my God! Never mind. Yeah, no, no, I get it, I get it. And also, the people on Minds. dot com. If you saw the little message and clicked the link and followed over to the the Freakers Ball Show page, welcome to you as well. Yes, uh, welcome. Yeah, and uh, welcome and, everybody that's listening and tuning in from wherever you're tuning in at. And 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 we got some we got some folks on the uh, on the uh, audio stream. Somebody from the UK, somebody from Kentucky. We know who she is. Ooh, somebody, someone from the UK. Yeah. That could be anybody. It could be anybody. <laughs> yeah, it could be anybody. Someone we know, maybe, or not. I, you know. who, yeah, we, we don't know. Whatever, there, it's out there. If anybody wants to tune in, you can tune in anywhere around the world. Right. And anyway, we got a few on the audio stream, but we got more on the video stream. So howdy and welcome to you all. That are out yes, there. Welcome, all, one and all. On the Freakers Ball, right here. Freakers Ball, live. <laughs> so it's been another hell of a hot week, but. Uh, it's been a hell of a week, yep. A hell of a hot week. Yeah, hot. Yeah, here too. Not so bad at the beginning of the week, but today it was bitchin' hot. <laughs> yeah, well, you got the reverse, because today was the coolest day. It only got up to like 93. <laughs> so we got it from you guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Yeah. But, but but the rest of the week it's it's been one hundred and one hundred plus every day. Wow. So, um, oh. Yeah, it was nice. But you that guys don't have the humidity like we do up here. Oh no no no, not even close. You guys, the humidity will freaking. That's why I run air conditioning because of the humidity. Not so much the, the temp. It's the dew point, the humidity. That oh, you know. Well, that whatever. Kills. When it when it gets when it yeah. gets to a hundred, it's hot no matter what it is. What, yeah, what it is. I mean, I I have to regulate. <laughs> I do pretty good regulating the temperature of the house, just the window air conditioners we have. It does help with the humidity. That's the main reason I have air conditioners, window ones, is the humidity. It's just it's bad. Yeah, yeah. And I have to run a, a dehumidifier down in my basement all the time in the summer for sure. Right. Well, that's kind of a yeah. a. a, a 
a water trap down there anyway, so. It is. I mean, it gets so damp. If it's humid, like, one year, we, we live here, and I didn't run it for a while, like, a week, and it was, like, a really hot and humid week, and I come down, and there's, like, it just looked weird down there. Just Everything was just moist. I'm like, okay, dehumidifier for sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, that, those are fine. Yeah. You, know, you know, you can use those to collect water. Uh, yeah. De depending, depending on the model you have. Uh, I ha Well, I have, I can either collect it in the, the thing, yeah. or I can, you can hook a hose up to it and go into the drain. So I just have the, the little small cut-off hose. It goes from the back of the dehumidifier into the drain. Yeah. In the basement there on the uh, floor. You could, you could use them as a water collector. For, yeah, you could. Yeah. Anyway, I want to say, say hi water, to say hi that's, to that's not for drinking water. Well, it could be. I mean, it's it's just out of well, your head. Oh no! Well, you, you have to, obviously like you have to, obviously you have to filter it, but it's just. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that would be for more like watering your plants or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. You could certainly, uh, you know, when push comes to shove. You're, you well, you, yeah, you, you could were certainly desperate. use that, but but you do definitely want to filter it. Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, um, so they have these life straws, Graham. Yeah, and no, I'm familiar with the life straw. Actually, we have them. I think list. I'm going to what? Go ahead. We, we have them on on Real Liberty Media. If you go to the Amazon store on Real Liberty Media, you can find oh, the really? life straw. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I've seen them, at, you know, at various stores or whatever, and I'm just going. And I've heard about them. I do want to stock up on a few of them. Just you never know. Oh yeah, we got a, we got a whole selection of uh, survivability stuff okay, on I'm Real Liberty Media in the Amazon store. Okay, I will look it up next time I'm on Amazon. I will check out. And we'll search Real Liberty Media. Yeah, go there for you. Just go there and you go to Amazon Store and you, and okay. then you'll see the categories listed there. And 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 one of them is uh, survival or something. Yeah, like survival crap. Cool. <laughs> nice. Awesome. I mean, it's a good idea. Whoever invented it was it was thinking. You know. Oh, absolutely. Like, okay. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean that's a really good invention. Sure. Sure. Yeah, those, uh, those work great, too. So. Yeah, you know, I think they should just hand those out to third world countries. Well, they, there probably are people that have done exactly that. You know, because... You know, to, to certain, you know, they certain people probably go to certain right. villages and, and see There's that they're... There's certain water they're, that people drink that it's a no wonder they get sick, you know, because... There's not a lot of sanitary sanitation systems and stuff like that, so... It just, the water gets really bad, and you can't, it's not good for drinking, you know. Um, right. Not not that the water in the U.S. is good for drinking. It isn't. <laughs> I'm not saying it is at all. Um, it, it's a different kind of not yeah, good for drinking. Exactly, um, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, so, interesting. So, thank you for the reminder, though. I always forget that about the Amazon store, the Real Liberty Media Amazon yeah, store. Yeah, e using that, or you could just click the, the regular Amazon link on the side, but, but there is... Oh, okay. But, but we'll, I do have some certain specific products listed there oh, okay. as well. Cool. I, I've never, I, I, I'm sorry, but I've never checked it out yet. <laughs> yeah, I got computers and tablets and I don't know what all is on there. Uh I, I didn't put that much in, into the, the building that store up because, well, I just didn't. Uh, but but there's enough there for interesting stuff for people that like Real Liberty Media should like the stuff I put up there. <laughs> cool. That's all I'm saying all right. that. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, howdy to all the folks here in the chat, yeah. Real Liberty Media chat on irc.freenode.net. A good group of folk, as always. There's uh, you and myself and the barman and Miss Kate and Mr. Asmodeus. Asmodeus. Beth Z and Chelsea Zoni and Chloe and Grams. Hey, Grams, thanks for the blog post. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, but I'll get to it later. We got Don C and Java Doctor and JJ and Wanataco. Thanks for the nickel. And <laughs> Rain and the Flute Bot. Uh, Rome's and Phantom and Circle and Circle, you awake? Probably not. Uh, Col Colfax in Flash, you awake? Probably not. Um, no, probably not. <laughs> and Frumpy and Goober and Donzi and Kozu and Moe. I guess scroll down. And a, and a bunch of poxes there. Four poxes. Yep. 
<laughs> the sock puppet and the Skittle. The Skittle. Yeah. Which is another bot, by the way. Right. That's, uh, that's, well, welcome, that's, everyone. It, we made it through another week. Yeah, we did. And, yeah, you know, it's always a, a good thing, knock on wood. And um, here we are again yes. to free and just, like, kind of, like, unwind. Yeah. From the week that we've had, you know, being bombarded with toxins and poisons and fake news and <laughs> whatever, you know. So much And, like, stuff. last week, and I don't know why, but I was calling Toffee Kofifi. Because it's just so dumb. I only said it a couple times, but it's like, because it's like, it sounds so stupid. It, it is stupid. It was, I, I don't know. Even, it, uh, that, that came <laughs> from some of the Trump thing or something. I, I, That's right. It's just like, really? Whatever. Why did that, I don't know. <laughs> it's on ad or something that yeah, says about it. I don't know, but it's like, really? I'm not, I'm not calling it coffee for pee It's just dumb. Yeah, yeah. So right. anyway... Anyway, exactly. Um, let's let's start off with some music, and then we'll come okay. back and we'll pull up some some various interesting okay. stuff to talk about. Um. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's kick you off. Oh man! All right, here we go. Here we go. Here so we everyone. go. This is for uh, a lot of us. Probably have this problem. Oh yeah, a little uh, muse there, as requested by Miss Kate, with Uprising from the Firefly Music Festival in Dover, USA. I'm guessing that's Delaware? <laughs> It doesn't really say. It just says Dover, USA. Anyway, from uh, last year. Uh, before that, we had Ronnie James Dio singing The Mob Rules. If you listen to Fools, The Mob Rules. And we kicked it off with Aerosmith Toys in the Attic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, good music. Good music. Yes. So. Uh, what was that again, that last one? Muse. Muse. You familiar with Muse? Uh, just that song, pretty much. Yeah. Well, I think that's mostly what we played here from Muse. Maybe a couple other ones. But, right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I've definitely heard that song before. I just wasn't sure the, the band name. Right. So, yeah. And you know the other band. But a ticket for what, Vinny? Don't just say you're going to buy a ticket. Oh, a ticket west. I, I'm i sorry. I missed that part. Sorry, I read that too quickly. So, west, Monday. Okay. Uh, going to Cali. The Cali-dog again, huh? He's going to California. Cali. Ooh. What part of Cali? The uh, pot part. Oh, <laughs> uh, northern California. <laughs> but all of California, really, right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um. I mean, come on. <laughs> Yeah. And so I'm watching this this thing, and it's mainstream media. I get it, but sometimes I do that because I like to see the other side, right? Okay. You know, the other take of you know what most people, how most people are. Right. And so they were talking about the border issue, right? Right. And so they picked um, Guadalajara. Which I not Guadalajara, the one not Tijuana that's right across, but the one that's right across the border from Mex from Texas from from from, from Laredo. From, well, oh, down that's further south. I don't know what's there. In Texas. Across from Laredo. Yeah. I know. But anyway, I know on El Paso you go into. Uh, it was El Paso. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's a little okay, gang so town. I forget the name of the town. Every day, though. A, a lot of Mexicans cross the border legally to work or go to school in the U.S. Right. And uh, most people don't realize this. 
and they're legally working and everything, and it's a very good relationship. And then they try to demonize this town in Mexico, and the mayor or whatever is like, no, no, this is not the case, you know. And so it was just, it, the reason I liked watching it is because I saw some footage and, you know, there was some stuff that I learned or whatever. Um, but there's humanitarian aid and people that go out there and put, like, jugs of water for people that are out there. Because it's just the, the, the amount of people that die traveling in this area, it's a lot. It's, they don't tell you how many people it is, right? Yeah. But it's a treacherous terrain. It's not easy travel. It's basically like the low desert or whatever, you know? Well, in El Paso, I mean, it's 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 a big city, so... They, right, they, they that's be... in Texas, but across from that, in the Mex in Mexico. Yeah, in, I know in the California desert, there was a water station set up for the people coming across. And there is still, but what that is, basically when you use this thing, a light comes on, and they come and find you. So, I mean, it's helpful, but in some ways it might not be. You know what I mean? Right. No, I mean, you know, it, it's... <laughs> if you're going to come okay, across... So, if you're going you, to be coming across, then you're, then, 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 then you're probably... Um, I mean, you've taken your chances in the first place. But right. so if you put some water out there, I mean, obviously that that would be a key point for 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 the thugs to go and try and grab them. Um, but right, you know, it, it, but there's humanitarian groups. There's the government water stations, and there, there's the humanitarian groups that just are bringing plastic jugs of water out there and setting them in areas. Right. I mean, and then they show a video of one of the guys the Border Patrol agents kicking all these buckets, these kicking these water so, you know, to, to drain them so they wouldn't be of any use, you know? Yeah. Supposedly that guy got fired. I didn't believe that. <laughs> right. He, I didn't believe that he got fired. Re reassigned to a different area of the border. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And see, their point was is they strengthened the border in one area, but then people figure out they'll go in a different area. I mean... As much as you try to put a wall up and control it, people are still going to find a way. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty long I border, they're, so... They're still going to find the fucking way, you know? Sure. And the sad part about some of these people that are coming in and crossing these areas is they're not actually immigrants. They're not trying to come here to live. What they are is they're drug mules. Some of them are, yeah. Yeah, some of them are. And they're forced into doing this. You know, and that's, to me, that's fucking, that's suppressing as shit. You know what I mean? I can't imagine being in that situation. You know? Right. Someone forcing me to do something for them that's illegal, and it's treacherous, and it's dangerous, and really, I mean, that's pretty hardcore. It, it is. That's what, what's hardcore. Why is my phone ringing? I don't know. Oh, my God. It shouldn't be ringing. <laughs> I, it's okay. I don't need to answer it. But anyway, um... It's not it me. It was just interesting to see both, you know, all different sides of the story. It's a complicated one. I obviously feel how I feel about it, so it was like... Um... Rhetoric, almost, to me. Um, I would be on the humanitarian side, okay? I'm, I don't, when I look at the land, I don't see the borders. Unless there's an actual physical thing, like, in between Minnesota and Wisconsin, there's a river, right? Yeah. It's kind of like a natural border in between the two states. Right. And, um, so to me, that's a border. It's not lines on a map. Right. And yeah, I think I a lot know. of people are confused and pissed off because they're like, oh, we can't have all these illegal people coming in here. And trust me, I don't want people coming into my town where I live that are coming here to commit crimes. All right? I don't like that. I don't want that. And that is happening here because 
it's the city is growing, and this is a this started out. Like, we've lived here twelve years. Sure. In the span of twelve years, this place is growing exponentially, and so that means the population is getting higher. And guess what? Some crime has gone up here, and it's just it, it's it's how it works. It's it's the way the system is set up right now here in this country. Yeah. And it's sad to see it because it's it's stuff that could have been, in my book, been prevented in so many ways. But it's like too late to say talk about it now, kind of, because it's like it's done, what's done is done. Now we got this, you know. Now you got to you can't go back. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, when you when you're when, you're, back, when right? you're talking about the Mexican border, and you're talking about the people that come across, and you say that they're drug mules. Some well, of them, but you, well, okay, you, but, you know, it's but not I know, I know, but, but whose fault, who's, like drug who, cartel. <laughs> whose fault is it that there's drug cartels, that there's drug mules? That's the government's fault. It's, that's uh, right. and the U.S. You make this crap illegal, and you're going to wind right. up with, with exactly. people that are going to figure out a way to do it. Yeah. And they don't care about your, you know, your stupid laws, they I mean, they're they're benefiting, they're profiting from from you having right. these things illegal. Yep, they are. So that was, that's what makes them thrive, actually. No, that's a, that's what that's what allows them to exist. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Right, because it's illegal. So, yeah, I get you. I get yeah, you. yeah. So this is the, this is what happened. Um, it used to be, like Grim told me, he grew up in San Diego, right? Yeah. And he used to go across to Tijuana all the time. Right. And But guess what? You would not want to fucking do that now. Today, tomorrow, you would not want to do that. Not unless you were armed. Because it's horrible down there now. It's nothing like it was when Grim was growing up. Explain it, Grim. When you would go there, what would you do? Whatever, I would just go down there and have a good time. You like go, doing what? Going to bars? Yeah, you go down stuff. there and get drunk and uh, go to the, you know, high lie games. We used to go down there for that and um, just go down, you know, drive down to Ensenada, you know, if you, if you don't want to hang out in Tijuana. Cause, you know, you never felt danger in danger or anything, Oh, right? that was, it was awesome. It was, you know, the only people you, you tried to avoid were the cops. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, that hasn't changed, Because right? you know, the cops are corrupt, and they'll extort you. Um, exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm Which sure there was, there was always some banditos down there that... But but I never, you know, you never ran, ran into them in, in the tourist towns, which was, where, you know, where I wound right. up going, but... So, Tijuana used to be a touristy town. Oh, absolutely. Total tourist town. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. It's totally fucked up, though. I, I don't know. I don't know how Tijuana is now. But, no, it, that's supposed to be, like, the worst of the worst now. But that's, that's the mainstream. But let me place. tell you. So, let me you tell know, you. I personally have not been there. I don't think I would go there. If I went there, I'd have to bring a couple bodyguards, and I'd have to be armed. Well, let me tell you, though, even though you know, uh, even though it was a cool, fun, touristy town place, if you were coming back across the border through the, like, yeah. say, say you parked on the U.S. side, and you walk right. down, and you take a taxi wherever, and, they, and then, then at the end of the, your night, the taxi brings you back up to the border, drops you off, and you have to walk up through the border. There's these people there, these real, and they, they just hang out there, and they're just yeah. poor, and they don't have a place to live, and, and they're sitting there, and they right. look just miserable, yeah. and, and they, they kind of sit there, their hands out like, oh, uh, oh God. Uh, and, and, yeah, it's, it's sad, very sad. Well, heartstrings. Oh, I tell you, man, but... Uh, it does, dude. You know, so it's a good thing you're drunk when yeah. you're coming back, because, you know, you don't want to see that. When no, not, yeah, when no, well, drunk. it's hard, I mean. <laughs> and they were interviewing one woman that was actually trying to cross, and she was like eight months pregnant. She was from Honduras, and they asked her. She couldn't speak English, but they asked her. They had an interpreter or whatever. And they said, why did you leave there? Why do you want to leave there? And she said, because the crime is so fucking horrible. Like, gangs of... Gangs are, like, taking over Honduras, places like that. El Salvador, some places like that. Right, yeah, sure, I'm sure there are. taking over, and they just won't go into your house, and they'll fucking kill you or rape you and then kill you, you know, and it's bad. 
I can't even imagine what it would be like to live like that. No, it's it's got to be just horrible. To... I can't imagine it. You know, I would not want to stay there either. And uh, I, I don't know what the gun laws are down there. I don't either. But, I mean, you know, you'd have to be armed all the time to, to just protect yeah, yourself. Yeah, you have to be. Yeah, and always you'd never be able to sleep, really. I mean, oh. it would be tough. It, it's it's a whole different world. Like, most, most Americans have no concept of what it would be like, which I don't even... No, what it, you know what I mean? Right, right. Like I said, we nobody. Have no idea. Pe people haven't seen the, the the just abject poverty going on. Just, I mean, it's, it's such a, a, a wide difference. Just walking right. a few feet from the United States side to the Mexican side. Right. Uh, and it's it's, yep. it's incredible how how yep. how it is. Uh, right. I mean, I've been some places in my life where I've seen it abject poverty, some of, some of it in the U.S., some of it in Puerto Rico or Jamaica or, you know, anywhere, North Dakota. I remember when I was a young kid, we, or that wasn't back then, I was 16, we went out to, my dad took us on a vacation out the west, out west, you know, mm -hmm. Minnesota, and North Dakota, we drove through a reservation, and this was back in 80-something, right? Right. It was abject poverty. And that was in the U.S. Oh yeah, well a lot of I mean, those, a lot of I've those tribes, I, I, you know, yeah. they, 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 a lot of those tribes, they got nothing, you know, on right. the, on the reservations and up and, in North Dakota, man. Yeah, I saw the same thing in uh, Spokane, and, and oh, this yeah. was not even on a reservation. This was just on With the street. With farm workers. Yeah. Yep. All these, you know, Native Americans out there, and they're they're just poor. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, but to see that, you know, it really does, like, when you're a kid, when you're 16, you think, oh, whatever, you think, you know, you're 16. But I think that did a lot um, to, like, shape me and make me think, you know, like, wow. You know, it just put things in perspective, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, maybe I didn't have it that fucking bad, you know what I no, mean? No, no. And it's not as far as... Just as far as amenities, like running water and a house, a decent house to <laughs> live in, you know, a solid house, not some fucking government piece of shit, you know what I mean? Right. With no heat. When you live in North Dakota, you need fucking heat. Well, when, when you drive down, or, or just kind of, you can see when, not necessarily it wasn't at, so much in Tijuana at that time, but further inland, there's I had other crossings there. You drive down and like all the houses, they got like blue tarps. Uh, stretched For up real. over the roofs because because yep. they couldn't you know they couldn't replace the roofs. Right. And I mean, that's can you imagine having a tarp as your your permanent roof? You know, <laughs> for your home. Yeah. I mean, seriously. And, and, and no can roads really. That? I mean, it was all just like dirt, dirt roads and. Right. And uh, yeah, so I mean, just 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 everything was it just dirty. It would be dirty. like camping all the time, like all the time. But that's how you live. You know. What? That that's how you live. But but overall, right. I, I think most of them are happy people. See, that's the thing that surprises you. And they, they live sometimes. they live how they live, and that's what they're that, that's what they know, and 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 they still have right. a you know, I, I, I would say a good life, a, a happy life. So right, that's one thing I noticed in Jamaica is those people are a lot of those people are very very poor. They live in small homes. They don't have a lot of possessions, um, but they're freaking happy. Yeah. They don't smoke. Most people, most of Jamaicans do not smoke cigarettes. Right. Um, they're very happy people. It's it's amazing. It's like it, that really put things in perspective for me too. It's like look at these people. They're joyous and happy, uh, and, then, and they don't have, and then, and they then have anything. <laughs> it's like. What's wrong with me? And then you'll, you know what I mean? like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with Americans? What's wrong with us? Well, right. You know, in those in those places, those poor places, yeah. you'd go to a place, uh, some restaurant or hotel or some resort or whatever, and you got all these rich Americans there, treating the people that are serving them like crap and acting like I total know. assholes. Oh, that's just, yeah. Oh. yeah, and you can tell that these these are not the these rich Americans are not happy. Right. 
and and the poor right. people that live there are just fine. See, when I went to Jamaica, dude, I am I'm a traveler. I'm just a lover of culture, and I just want to soak it all up. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is me, though. I'm not some fucking pissed off fucking drunk American rich fucking. You know what I mean? It's like I I treated these people with respect. And they gave me inside information. You know what I mean? Right. And I tipped them well. And, I mean, if you treat them with respect and as a human being, it will be returned tenfold. Sure. This is their country you're visiting. This oh, is yeah. why, I, oh, there was so many Americans that it made me embarrassed to be an American, how they were acting and treating these people. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? You know right. what I mean? Right. It just right. was bad. I hear exactly what you're talking about. The disrespect that you think you can give somebody because you're a fucking American. It's like, come on, buddy. You're a fucking dick. Yeah. You might be an American, but you're a dick before you're that. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you. and, you know, the thing is, that they're, they're used to that from Americans because... But they shouldn't be. Uh, uh, well, I know they mean? shouldn't be, but... But but then when you get like a you know a decent person down there right. uh, that treats them well, that treats them like a regular person rather than right. just some they will slave. tell you where to go. That's not the touristy places. They will give you like oh go to see like the tourist place will t tell you to go see this waterfall. They'll be like oh no, we know of a better one that doesn't have a brochure. Yeah. It's like oh really? You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll, they'll they'll tell you places to go and they'll actually take you there. They'll set up the ride for you to get there. I mean, there it's amazing. A little bit of kindness goes a long fucking way. You know, a little bit of the reason, not even a little bit, a lot of kindness and a lot of respect goes a long way. You know, human beings are fucking human beings. That's right. I don't give a fuck where they're at. What part of the planet they reside on. You know, right. this no, is the yeah, problem of society today. This is what, this mentality is what has created a lot of this shit. From the get-go. Right. This whole, oh, you look different than me, and you believe different than me. Yeah, we're still a fucking human being, bitch. You yeah, know what so, I mean? You know, all, like, all, this, all this crap about, oh, we don't want these these people coming here because they're just going to take advantage of this, that. Oh, they want, the, you know, the, the, the jobs to ruin the labor market. They're, they're people, they just want to live, right. and, and they have just as much right to be on whatever piece of dirt I'm that they want to be on. And, right. and so all these people that are all up in arms and shouting yep. and complaining and that, that they're coming say, over, they're those, people, those, those people Who has out. that authority? Who has the authority to say, oh, you're not allowed to be here? Well, apparently it's the people or with the big guns. You're not allowed to be there. It's like, excuse me? <laughs> um, what? Who are you? Yeah. And what did you just fucking tell me? Um, I have a right to be anywhere I fucking want to be. Because no one has the right to tell me different. Right, exactly. I am a fucking human being. And, uh, yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah. But it isn't, is it? Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I've always felt, when I go to someone else's country, I'm going to be respectful. Sure. You know, I'm not going to be a dickhead. I'm going to be respectful. I'm going to be me. I'm going to be a person. Well, you, you know, know, you know, when, when those people that, that are dickheads, they're not just dickheads in other countries. They're dickheads here, too. Oh, yeah, they're dickheads. <laughs> And you know, you worked at you worked at the fucking casino. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know how these assholes come in and act all big shoddy, you know. Oh my god. Uh, it, it, they, they're you know they're they're just that way. They're just assholes. They're assholes. And it's that <laughs> mentality that I can't fucking stand. And that's yeah. what we. I mean, it's just so annoying. It's like really, I don't know where that comes. I mean, I do know where it comes from. It comes from advertising, fucking societal norms, which are fucking psychotic. They're not normal. Alright? These fucking people, these advertisers and all this shit, they want you to be abnormal. It's like, fuck you. I'm not gonna be abnormal because you tell me I should be. You know? Fuck you. Right. 
I mean, I, I, I guess I'm, I'm lucky because I can see right through it, and it's just, it's a, actually a blessing. You know, yeah, I'm yeah, just, yeah, sure, it's, sure. It's a blessing. <laughs> I know. It's, it's craziness. It's just insane. It's just, it, it, it gets so out of control that you, you see it for what it is, and you're just like, what the fuck? So I can understand. I can understand with with all the people that are like that, and that's you know I think uh, maybe ten to fifteen percent of the population is that way, and, and the rest of the people are not not assholes like that. They may have other weird hangups or statists or whatever, but I can understand with people like that why Goober wants to get on a spaceship and get the hell out of here. Right, I get that too. I get it, dude. Hey, trust me. You know, I mean, I've even thought about moving to Canada. <laughs> I'm yeah, they got, they they got assholes I'm up there. I'm trying that? to be funny. Yeah, they, they got they got dickheads up there, too. Yeah, they they got dickheads up there. You can't really escape dickheads. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, man. Hot air balloon. Hey, like the word theme. It was a demand. But the other way around. Or maybe a tornado. You know. Yeah. Like a, 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 an act of nature. Of course, of course, she just had a concussion, but, you know. Exactly. She was just dreaming the whole time. <laughs> but there was actually a tornado at the beginning. That's how she got her concussion. Right. Because she was hit by flying debris or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. And, and, and she must have been eating some acid or mushrooms or, or something. Or some mushrooms. Yeah. I'm thinking cause... mushrooms, but, you know. Um, yeah, she, she was on something. She was on uh, tripping hard. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Like Atlas in Wonderland, man. <laughs> yeah. No, no kidding. Oh, yes. God. All I right. Love let's, that let's... story, The Wizard of Oz. One of my favorites. Yeah. Gotta yeah, love it. Right? I think the Cowardly Lion, you know, I love all of them. I, like, you can't pick a favorite between Scarecrow, Tenement, and Cowardly Lion. I, I can't pick a favorite. Though. Like, I love them all equally. You know, I feel like Dorothy that way. You know, because she did. She loved them all equally. Yeah. For different reasons, because not everybody is the same, and it's okay. It's okay that people have flaws in some areas. It doesn't make them a bad person. No. Right? No. Life would be boring if we were all the same. All yes, right? it would. <laughs> I would not. Wa I, I would not but, want a world filled with me. <laughs> yeah, all you, man, all the time, all Grimner, all the time. Like everyone would look at me like you and talk like you. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be arguing. No, with, no, I don't. I'd be arguing with myself every day. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, let's hear some more music here. Too bad. Well, there's Whoop. gonna be a great wrong, 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 wrong link. So funny. Wrong click. <laughs> Oh, God. All right, this is uh, new, new from Joey B. Off of his new album. And you can order the album now. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, is it released yet? Mm, doesn't say. Anyway, it's off of his new album. The song is called Redemption. Oh, yeah, I just like, I have to agree. I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do, so I'm going to be a cricket and leave it up to you. <laughs> That's Philip's so, statement. Hey, if too many people say that, then no one's doing anything. That's the problem. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> That's, That's Philip says there doing the old song, I'd, I'd love to change the world. Uh, before that, C6, Steve, with The Level Devils, song called Cheap. And uh, living on the cheap, yes, indeed, as we were talking about in that, that previous break. Uh, poor yep. people out there, you know, living uh, in cardboard boxes, sleeping with uh, right. newspapers. Right, in the U.S., it's more painful because the U.S. is supposed to be the land of opportunity and yep. this and that. Down in third world countries or whatever, they're used to that. Right, right, right. Well, uh, a lot of those, and that's the problem. A lot, a lot of those street people have been out there for years, too. Anyway, right. no, anyway, we kicked it I off know. there. We kicked it off with Joe Bonamassa doing Redemption, a new one from Joey B. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Yeah, amazing My stuff. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. 
No. Yeah, yeah. I, but anyway, whatever. He, I'm sure he has many women to choose from. Oh, well. So, like, you know, would, come on. I would guess he probably you know, does. I could be a fan from afar. Yeah, and sure. And I usually am, so, you know. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I mean. He is talented, dude. He's got the shit. He is the shit. All right. Well. And Gary Clark Jr. Uh, Gary Clark Jr. <laughs> is the shit as well. Oh, no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah. So, so. let's talk about hemp. Let's talk uh, about okay. hemp. I, I may have an article. I have a I have a good article about hemp that. All right. That that I that I planned on sharing here tonight. Nice. Um, See, hey, great minds think alike, and we didn't even plan that, people. Not at all. That was total telekinetic. Right there. That was telekinesis. In sure. Action, right there, before your very eyes. Me and Grim are like somewhat telekinetic. You know, it happened. Yeah. Thing. Um. I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced that, but um, I have, and with more than one person, I have experienced that. Yeah, synchronicity, that's what we got, synchronicity. Yeah, something like that. It's it's called karma, maybe. Maybe that, I don't know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe. Serendipity. Serendipity. <laughs> I love that word, serendipity. It's uh, an awesome fucking word. Okay, um, so, I, so, so, so I came across this site, and it's called Hemp for Victory, Okay, it's, I like it's, it. it's a New Zealand site, and I'll I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a link to the, to the site, but I'll but I'm gonna take you to the article that that okay. it came through from it, and it's something we've all heard about on on yep. on many occasions, um, and of course you know what that is. It's the car. It's the car. Yes. Look at that. Oh yeah, Bitcoin going up. Very nice. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, let, let me get to this, this article about the car here. It's uh, here we go from collectiveevolution.com. Ten times stronger than steel. It in the, is in it's the nineteen it's the strongest fiber. In the nineteen forties, Henry Ford's hemp car. Yes. So it says when we think of cars, we think of gasoline, steel, pollution, etc. Well, maybe you don't. But that's what comes to mind for me. Even though we have this thing popping up out of my way. Um, even though we have some innovation and visually pleasing cars on the road today, it is difficult to ignore the sheer environmental impact that modern cars create. What if cars didn't have to be the way they are today? If you're a researcher of any kind of alternate alternative information, you already know this to be true, especially given that the technology already exists today, today to make cars smarter, safer, and more eco-friendly. No fossil fuels necessary. But did you know that Henry Ford spent more than a decade researching and building his Model T car, which was not only constructed from hemp, but was also designed to run off of hemp biofuel? Whatever happened to this idea? According to Popular Mechanics, uh, we Henry... know what happened. <laughs> anyway, according know to what happened. according to Popular Mechanics, Henry Ford's first Model T car was built to run on hemp gasoline. And he was a dickhead. He and, sucked. And, and the car Terrible itself, convenient. the car itself was actually constructed from hemp. It was yes, the, on, the body of the car. Yeah, yeah. On the his large body of the car, like right. the fenders, the bumper, like all that shit. Yeah, Think yeah. about this, people. Think about this. Uh, a hemp plastic. Yes. Right, on, on his yeah. on his large estate, which is biodegradable, yeah. biodegradable by the way, absolutely, and much cleaner burning. Anyway, yeah. Ford Ford was photographed among his hemp fields. Uh, the car grown from the Where soil had hemp plastic panels whose impact strength was ten times stronger than steel. Hello. To, to, to think that even one of the founders of the major car manufacturers was trying to give the world a vehicle that was safe, strong, and clean for the environment, yet his invention was so suppressed that it's somehow right. disheartening, somewhat disheartening. Uh, oh, my God. It's, 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 it's sickening, really. It's bad. It's, it's terrible. Now how did we go from such an obvious and intelligent discovery to using gasoline, steel, and other other non-harmonious materials? 
it's important to remember that not only do we need to look at the pollution factor of a material while in use, but also the manufacturing and creation from raw materials. Look at hemp. It, it complies with every eco standard right. that exists today. Uh. In fact, from raw, it, well, in fact, it blows them out of the water. The suppression of this technology, yep. largely due to the fact that hemp was outlawed in the United States in 1937, due to the potential damaging effect. No, okay, but let's, well, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's just let me finish the sentence. Well, let me finish the sentence here. <laughs> Due to the potential damaging effect it would have on many powerful industries at the exactly. time. <laughs> Not so what? During World War Two, World War Two, or whatever, farmers were forced to grow hemp for the government so they could because they needed it for rope and, and such. Because it's the strongest fiber, it makes the strongest rope. And that's that's no that's no doubt there. Right. Uh anyway, so so that, 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 that's the core of the story. they got a couple of videos here um, about the sheer strength of Ford's hemp vehicle as well as the possibility of hemp-based vehicles and fuels. Hemp has a bright future, apparently, maybe. The prohibition of it certainly won't last forever, given the amount of awareness that is being raised around the subject. Now, after I read this article, um, I, I also came across some guy trying to debunk it, and it was terrible. Oh, it was terrible, his article. Was, Go ahead oh, and read it. Go ahead and read it. I, I, don't, I don't even save the link, so it doesn't matter. Right. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever he is, he's a dumbass. <laughs> it was terrible. The things yeah. he was trying to point out, and, and there was, he had like a hundred comments on his article, everybody was just okay. laughing at him. So, like, what kind of researcher know, are you? <laughs> right. For those who don't know, the female plant of the hemp plant, of the pot plant, is the one that grows the bud that get you high or whatever. You no. Know? The male plant is hemp. Okay? Right. Which has low THC content. It does have some, but very low. That's why it's good for making stuff like clothes and fuel and um, strong enough fibers to make car bodies. Okay? Right. And it's all natural. And it's biodegradable. Sure. I Meaning it, it, it biodegrades. Like plastic does not biodegrade. All plastic no, does no, no, break no, up no, no. all 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 fossil fuel based plastic does not biodegrade. Hemp right. plastic does. Exactly. And you thank can make you, and it's that. better and stronger and 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 right. <laughs> and so think about this history of this country. And all the steel mills, and all the mines, and all the mine accidents, and all the lives lost, with all the dangerous practices that they used back in mining all this, all this stuff. I mean, it all could have been, a lot of this could have been prevented. And the pollution of the planet, and the water in this country, could have been prevented. Sure. Had they done better things. I mean, better ways of doing things, right? Yeah, right. So it's been shut down because of money. Right? Yes. And don't get me wrong, plastic is kind of a good thing. It can be used for very good purposes, but there's too fucking many things being made out of plastic now. Well, I mean, but, but if, 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 kid, if, yeah, if they just used a hemp plastic, you wouldn't be saying right. that there's too many things made out of plastic. Exactly. Right. Yep. Right. See, Vinny. Because the plastic that we have nowadays, most of it, is petroleum based. Right, it's all petroleum based. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we're talking about: natural versus not natural. Okay. And there's just—it's a no-brainer. But the big wigs and the assholes and the rich fucks that were making the decisions, they wanted to make fucking money. They didn't give a fuck about the people or the planet or the water. Well, they were idiots because they themselves need to, they're human beings, and they need clean air and clean water just like the next fucking person does. No matter how much fucking money you have, you're still a fucking human being. Some of you. <laughs> yeah, if you don't got clean water to drink or clean air to breathe, you will die. 
or good food to eat. Right. It don't matter how much fucking money you have. Mother Nature don't give a fuck how much money you fucking got. No, it doesn't. No, it don't. It don't even care if you're here. Right. Mother Nature don't give a fuck. So all those people that got money and think that they, they got it better or something than um, someone else that has not as much money as them, they're fucked in the head. So that's totally wrong thinking. Because if you're a fucking human being, you're a goddamn human being. Yeah. It don't matter how much fucking money you got. We all have the same need. A human being has needs to survive. They're basic, but it's wa clean water, clean air, good food to eat, exercise, sunlight, stuff like that. Every human being needs that, no matter how much fucking money you fucking got. But yet, in this country especially, we've been tricked by money. We've put money ahead of every fucking thing. Everything. Sure. Our health. We put money ahead of our health. Because it's easier to just sit around and eat fucking junk food and not have to exercise and be a fat ass. Because everything's fucking just right there instantly. We've become sedentary. That's why we have a problem with obesity in this country. Oh, that, that, know, that's part of it. All this but fast food and all this processed food, it's all bad for you. Right. People don't want to make their own exercise. food. Exercise? What? So people don't want to make their own food. Exactly. The lack of exercise? Well, we used to be a farming country. We used to be a nation that could produ produce food here. Now we can barely produce enough food here. The food that we do produce is full of shit. Right. That's bad for you. So, you know, you know, it's fucked. Yeah, every everything's totally chemically laden. Yeah, it's fucked up, dude. Yeah, it's so far from natural. And then people wonder, well, why is there so much cancer, and why, you know, hello? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Chemicals, nasty chemicals, not good for you and me. Right. Or any living thing, for that matter. Exactly. But we all got sold out, all the rest of us little that are at the bottom of the pyramid, you know. We're not as high up as those people with all that fake money and shit. Oh, no, certainly not. No, no, they're... So, they're... they made the decisions. We didn't make it, you know. I'm sorry, Henry Ford, he had a good well, idea, but he fucking got coerced and stuff by fucking big money, you know. Oh, yeah. That's why they suppressed that hemp technology. You know? Right. I, I mean, there was, there was a ton of reasons. and Except when the government needed it during World War II to make rope and shit. Oh, then it was okay for farmers to grow it because it was for the government. All right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. But as soon as the war ended, oh, we don't need you to do that anymore. But we're not. We're also not going to allow private citizens to grow it either to, because they could profit off of it. And they're going to, you know, it, it, we can't let this hemp information out there. Because, you know, no, we can't have that. Right. It's too good of a product. Uh, yeah. That, that it, it it's can, too... It should be uh, only in our control. Too easy to produce and... and right. And, yeah. Oh, people would be making their own dresses and fuel. We can't have that. Right. Oh, so, my God. How asinine is this? Totally. <laughs> you know what pisses me off? It's these rich fucking pricks that were, have been around for generation after generation, been doing the same old shit generation after generation, and it's like, you know what? They're fucking dumb, dude. They're evil. They don't deserve anything. They need to go away, you know. But yeah, yet people they do. just eat up their shit. They they they're the ones that get the politicians. They're the one it's all bought and paid for. <laughs> nice try, Juan. It's all decided ahead of time and bought and paid for. That's why like I rag on voting because especially if you're voting for a person especially let's just use the president as an example of the United States. 
it's 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 like going through the motions, making yourself think that you have a choice, but you don't because the decision's already been made. And it, it, it's just so. It's it's to keep you controlled and make you think you have a, a choice in the matter. Sure. But you sure. don't. You do not. That's well, why I won't waste my energy on it. Well, let, let's you know? see how this works in with all that. It's an article up here on LouRockwell.com, and it's called Death by Regulation, How We Were Robbed of a Golden Age of Health and How We Can Reclaim It. So it says, most people believe in government agencies like the FDA keep them safe, but a book by Dr. Mary J. Ruard explodes this myth. People often argue that without the protection of government agencies, we would face constant peril. Allegedly, without the FDA, our pharmacy shelves would be lined with unregulated products containing deadly substances marketed by the unscrupulous. Of course, this argument rests upon the uh, unspoken assumption that the laws and regulations enforced by the FDA are benign, causing little or no harm and few if any deaths. It also rests upon the assumption that without government regulation, there are no market-based mechanisms for certifying the safety of drugs and products. Her important new book, uh, Dr. Ruert, provides information which thoroughly refutes these assumptions. By the way, I, I met Mary Ruert at, uh, in 2008 at the uh, Libertarian Party convention. Uh, anyway, Ruert holds a B.S. in biochemistry, a Ph.D. in biophysics, and spent 19 years as a pharmaceutical research scientist for the Upjohn Company. She also has chaired an IRB, which is Institutional Review Board, uh, consulted with nutraceutical companies, and has been an expert uh, on expert witness for the against the FDA. Therefore, she is intimately familiar with the impact of the FDA, the laws and regulations it enforces. Her easily digestible book focused specifically upon the detrimental impacts of the 1962 amendments to the 1938 FDA Food and Drug Act. Uh, the Ruert, Dr. Ruert reviews the burdensome effects of the amendments, including the lengthening of the average period uh, for a new drug development from approximately four years to 14 years. She explains the numerous additional requirements set forth in the amendments and the additional development time caused by them and provides heartbreaking examples of the effect this wait time has on those with life-threatening illnesses. For example, she discusses how in the early years of the AIDS epidemic, U.S. AIDS patients often had to travel to other countries with fewer regulatory requirements to obtain new therapies, still unapproved by the FDA, sometimes having their drugs confiscated upon re-entry to the U.S. She further discusses black market AIDS buyers clubs, which quickly formed in response to the need, in, to the need for therapies and hired uh, chemists to make drugs under, undergoing development in violation of pharmaceutical companies' patents. She also points out that although making, selling, and distributing these drugs without FDC approval violated the law, the FDA often took no action against most violators, especially those in California who were well-organized and vocal, and that instead the FDA selectively prosecuted those who were least likely to fight back. This illustrates that organizing and fighting back against unfair laws can be effective in preventing or reducing their enforcement. Dr. Ruert also reminds me of the wholly unseen effect of the amendments, the drugs that will never be developed, which otherwise likely would have been, due to the burdensome costs added by the amendments. She also significant, shows how significantly these costs have increased in the decades since the passage of the amendments and the unsustainable trajectory of the costs. She further points out the logical conclusion that if unabated, these rising costs will resu result in no new drugs at all. Clearly, pharmaceutical companies will decline to develop drugs with anticipated development costs that exceed anticipated profits. 
because these undeveloped drugs, which are never pursued by the pharmaceutical companies, are unseen by you, the American public, it fails to grasp their full extent of the harm caused by the FDA and the amendments. Dr. Ruhr also describes a paradigm shift away from the prevention and toward treatment caused by the amendments. She reviews the importance to the nutrition of uh, health with illustrations from her own experience in altering laboratory animals' nutrition in order to create diseases for laboratory study. She explains that the natural products can be patented under certain circumstances, but that the amendments cost costly requirements have caused pharmaceutical companies to largely abandon manufacturing vitamins and natural substances. Ruart also discusses the seizure of products and even criminal prosecution that companies selling nutritional products risk if they claim that their products can actually treat a disease. She provides yet another heartbreaking example of the harm caused by the amendments in describing what she refers to as American thalidomide. Tra tra tragedy, which prevents folic acid manufacturers from advertising the benefits of folic acid, taken early in pregnancy and preventing neural tube defects such as spina bifida. As Ruart points out, this tragedy is especially ironic because the amendments were purportedly intended to prevent tragedies such as birth defects caused by the drug thalidomide. Perhaps the most important chapter in her book is Chapter 50. Certification is the alternative to regulation. This section may enlighten those who can imagine only the state-oriented solutions to the problem. The chapter discusses the existence of an effective private solution for protecting consumers. Dr. Ruard explains that certification occurs when professional or consumer groups give their seal of approval to a product or service and cites as an example the Underwriters Laboratory Inc. UL, a, a private certifying agency which tests appliance and electrical hardware and grants to those that meet its standards the UL seal of approval. Most retailers will not sell appliances without the UL seal of approval. And Ruhr points out that this voluntary private certifying agency has been successful in keeping consumers safe for decades. She explains that if FDA approval became optional, third-party drug testing and certification could and would definitely become part of the consumer landscape to protect customers. Ruart's book is a solid blow, the, strikes a solid blow to the myth of government as our protector and illustrates the harmful impact often caused by even well-intentioned laws and regulations. Her book is well-written and well-researched and should be added to the library of those interested in medical freedom and also the elimination of other uh, harmful governmental agencies, which I'm going to have to go ahead and say they're all harmful in their own way. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But if people would just understand that we, you don't need the FDA to approve these things or, or to regulate them or to ban them just doing it as as he as she pointed out there with the, with the UL uh, can be done with drugs with foods with uh, safety devices on cars on what whatever it, anything that people make that to, to sold to other people can be done that way and you can eliminate all those government departments and we'd all be better off and 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 things would right get to market quicker and, and people would make a better profit and you'd be paying less right. for the products and <laughs> yep that's but bullshit every, everything the government touches turn to shit that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's the just, rule uh, <laughs> that's not, so obvious it's like really right I mean okay so they passed a law that you could grow legally grow hemp in Wisconsin but then they tried to say that you couldn't sell the CBD oil, and that got shut down. But people are still getting busted for marijuana. Exactly. So it's all ass backwards, and it's just like, really? Yeah. It's just so slow when you deal with government shit. It's just like, you people are... Don't get me started. It's just like uh, so I dumb. won't get you started. So dumb. 
but I will play. Some, but I will play some more music. <laughs> Let's do that. It's time, I think. I think it is. All it right, is. we got here the uh, Johnny Lang and Doyle Bramhall. Okay. Song called oh. "Angel of Mercy." Ooh. Oh, wow. oh yeah, a little Samantha Fish there for you. Yes, indeed, some very nice pictures of Samantha Fish in that video. The song, Highways, Holding Me Now. Kick, uh, before that was Joe Bonamassa with Stop from Tour de France live at Shepherd's Bush Empire. And we kicked it off with a sock puppet request from last week. Angel of Mercy, Johnny Lang, featuring Doyle Bramhall 2. Yeah, solid blues all throughout that set. Oh, yeah. Set. I love Johnny Lang. I've seen Johnny Lang. I've seen Johnny Lang when he was young, when he was first starting out. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing, dude. No, I no saw doubt. him when he was like 18, 19. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. He is the real deal, too. He is the real deal. No doubt. Any blues man that can play a guitar is the real fucking deal. It's on <laughs> You can play it. You can play it well. Here's the real deal. Well, apparently... Oh, that's uh, my take on it. What? Uh, apparently, uh, Sock Puppet's the real fucking deal, too, then. He must be. Yeah, I've heard some of his music. Yeah. And he, he has the blues in him. He's like, got and, blues. Yeah, he's, he's the shit. <laughs> yep. I love all guitar players. That's all I'm saying. Like, all y'all, right. y'all got a little piss in my heart. That's all I'm saying. Yep. Even yep. Elvis Presley has a little piss in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I don't blame you, man. I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> I'm a music fanatic, all right? You know, I'm yeah. a dancer, so hey, you know, I have to have music in order to dance. Right. But I could dance with all music, but it's so much better with it. Uh, sure. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, absolutely. I mean... It, it, to me, it's just the ultimate. You know? The ultimate. It is. It, it it makes me feel really good inside and happy. So, you know. Cool. How can it be bad? I, I, I have no idea. It isn't bad. It's, not bad. <laughs> it's like a friggin' drug, people. <laughs> yes, it is. I gotta move my body. If I hear good music and it makes me feel something, I have to move. I mean, that's... You know, that's the definition of dancing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And the misnomer is that there's a right way to dance. No. There is no right way to dance. There may not be, you but there are... There are, feels it needs to move. there are some you, wrong ways. <laughs> there, no! There are no wrong ways to dance. If you're feeling it I, in your heart, I, I, I've, and I've, it's I've, I'll just tell you, I, I, it's your natural way... There is no wrong way. To I, I've dance. I've seen some people dancing, and I'd say it, that's just wrong. But that's your perception that's, of dancing. That, there's, there's something wrong with this person. That, that's no, just... to them that's dancing. <laughs> to you, it might not be. But to them, it is. You know, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'm sure you I'm sure you see them all. I'm, I'm sure you but, see them around. And you go, oh no, no, that's just, that's, that, that's that's just not right. They, it's either like comical, <laughs> it's comical. You know, it's funny. You know, oh, I mean, God. so I went to Grateful Dead concert last weekend, Dead and Company at Alpine Valley last Saturday. I was there. Yeah. And it was awesome. Awesome. And some old time hippie sold me an Indica Ganja cookie. Yeah. He's like, Ganja cookie. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist, you know? Yeah. He was an old-timer hippie. He had gray hair and a gray beard. You can't go wrong with that. Sure. You can't go It wasn't in disguise. It was not. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so you go there, and, you know, I haven't been to Alpine Valley for like 20 years you now. Yeah. And so I get there, and I'm in the show, and it's fucking packed with people, right? I mean, just packed. Right, right. And it's just crazy. And so I have to go to the restroom, the bathroom, you know, in between sets. I'm like, okay, they're in between sets. I'm going to go and fucking take a pee. Even though I really didn't have to go that bad at that point. 
You know, I'm just like, just get it over with. Okay. I get where the porta potties are. And there's like th- literally 30 people in each row of the, you know, I'm like, this will not work. So I go back to my seat, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. And I get another beer, which, by the way, the beers were $17. But okay. they were the bigger cans, but they were $17 for one fucking can of beer. A 24 ounce can of beer. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I can. little I know, uh, some people that are around me, they're like, oh, did you go all the way down to the bathroom? I'm like, what do you mean all the way down? Like, you better keep walking down the path. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go pee now. You know, I'm going to go past those porta potties and keep walking down the path. So I go walking down the path, and lo and behold, there's an actual building with running water and bathrooms and toilets and sinks and everything. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, right? And they had attendants working in there, like to replace the toilet paper and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. One lady's like, "There's no weed in here. There's no weeding." I'm like, "Hey, that's me." So at that point, I really did have to fucking pee. You know? Sure, sure. But anyway, it was crazy. I mean, I'm like, this can't be all the porta potties they have. And then I found out they had. I'm like, oh, thank God. You know? <laughs> so I hate porta potties with passion. I hate them yeah. so bad. I hate this stuff. But anyway, the show was amazing. Um, they had John Mayer, of course, on guitar with Bobby on guitar. And then they had O'Teal Burbridge on bass, who he's amazing. Oh, my God. And it was an awesome show. It, they played, the, their encore was One More Saturday Night. Like, a friend of mine was like, what's going to be their encore? I'm like, One More Saturday Night. Duh, it's Saturday night. You know, <laughs> the encore, I knew that would be great crowd, just awesome people, just so much fun, dude. Camped a little, like, seven miles away from there and had to take a bus to get there. It was so much fun, dude. It was so awesome. Right. That was an experience. It, every dead show, if you ever go, if you've never been to a dead company or dead show, you need to go at least once in your lifetime. I would recommend that for everybody, just... Just to feel it, just to experience it. There's nothing like it. It's indescribable, really. Okay. I'm just saying, and I wasn't even tripping. <laughs> I'm serious. I was not tripping. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> at all. I believe you. Okay, let's tell you. <clears throat> Put that out there. Now, I think the person that wrote this article could be tripping. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Could have been tripping when he wrote the article. I don't know. Something, something was up in his head. Uh, yeah, <laughs> figure it out. But this is on LiveScience.com. And it says, Black holes could actually be colliding wormholes. Okay. Which seems odd to me because, <laughs> because a, a black hole, as they describe it anyway, whether true or not, is an area of such intense gravity that nothing escapes. But if it was a wormhole, then there would have to be another end of it somewhere where nothing went in and only stuff came out. For it to be a wormhole, which is a passageway, right? Yes. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> But he's got a lot of coulds and shoulds and maybes and such things like that here in the article. He says, when two wormholes collide, they could produce ripples in space-time that ricochet off of themselves. Future instruments could detect these gravitational echoes, providing evidence that these hypothetical tunnels through space-time actually exist, a new paper suggests. The laser inter- interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, (laughs) LIGO, has already detected space-time ripples called gravitational waves, and of course those exist, emanating from merging black holes. So if something, if a black hole is a black hole as they describe it, then there's not anything emanating from it, only stuff going in. 
But while LIGO's detection was just one of the many observations supporting the existence of black holes, these exotic objects still pose theoretical problems. For instance, they seem to be inconsistent with the laws of quantum mechanics. One way to resolve these problems is if black holes were actually wormholes. Point of no return. One of the main features of black holes is the event horizon, a region of space-time beyond which nothing can escape, not even light. If you throw anything into a black hole, it's lost forever, to an extent. Stephen Hawking discovered that, thanks to a phenomenon known as quantum tunneling, black holes could actually produce a tiny bit of radiation, which would become known as the Hawking radiation. Over a long time, black holes could even evaporate away due to this radiation. But what comes out is random, said Amber Stuver, an astrophysicist at Villanova, who was not involved in the new research. The radiation contains no clue as to what went into the black hole. The quantum mechanics, if you know everything about a particular system, then you should be able to describe its past and its future, she said. But because any information that goes into a black hole is gone for good, the event horizon doesn't jibe with quantum mechanics. To resolve the so-called black hole information paradox, some physicists <laughs> have suggested that event horizons don't exist. Instead of abysses from which nothing can return, black holes could actually be a host of speculative black hole-like objects that lack event horizons, such as bosons, uh, stars, grav stars, fuzzballs, and even wormholes, which were theorized by Albert Einstein and uh, physicist Nathan Rosen decades ago. A anyway, so there's obviously an event horizon in uh, conventional, <laughs> hate to use that word, uh, way of looking at black holes, and it would make sense that they could, that, I mean, that at some point, somewhere, whatever goes into a black hole must come out somewhere. The gravity has got to be pulling from point A to something. Um, but I think that where it pulls to is into another dimension, um, and not within this dimension. So it being a wormhole, per se, as to like travel across a galaxy or across many galaxies, depending on uh, how it's how it's formulated, um, seems less likely than it's probably pulling it off into another dimension somewhere. And I'll, I'll let you read the rest of this for yourself. Some of it's a, l a little bit heavy, but uh, it's, it's not not that bad. Um, it's 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 fairly well done for for the layman. If you haven't actually done any reading <laughs> or studying on 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 black holes and other uh, astral phenomena, <laughs> oh, I find it. I, I I love these things, but uh, I, I think there's uh, far more speculation going on here. Uh, oh then, yeah. Then, then, well, of, of course, it's got to be. I mean, they don't, they, they don't really understand all this, right? No. And uh, so, I, I would say that these black holes like a drain um, to another dimension, and or or maybe another forming universe. So the the other forming universe is pulling crap out of this universe to start that universe. <laughs> Por well, portals of a type, yeah. Rome's absolutely, um, it, it, but a, a portal to where? That, that's the question. A portal with, within the, within the, the same universe or not? Um, and, and if it is, then we we should see we should see the 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 output port somewhere. All we see is the input port, which is where you get the black holes from. There, there's no reversal opposite of a black hole that just is there spewing crap out um, just as a black hole is pulling it in. So I'm going to have to say it's, it's not going anywhere 
that we can see from this dimension. It's got to be going to another parallel dimension, another universe. <laughs> yep. Well, I, I we I, I don't know if we're in a black hole, but uh, 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 probably not. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking somewhere. We're here. We're doing whatever we're doing. You know, this is it. You can't like get too like this is essential. You fucking you go insane. Trying to figure it all out because we're not supposed to know everything in human form. You know, you're here in this fucking hell on earth, hell for a reason. You know, to learn something or whatever the reason is. But we're not supposed to know everything when we're in this form, human form. When you're in spirit form, you pretty much know everything. But once you become a human, you don't know shit. Right. Sometimes right. About stuff. And sometimes you're not supposed to know it when you're in this form. That's what I believe. I'm not saying it's right. I'm uh, yeah, it's no. I know it differently than anybody else. Right, absolutely. That's my take on it. Absolutely. What? Hey, let's 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 briefly talk about this next thing here, which is totally right. unrelated to the previous thing. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> and uh, Rome's Rome should should get a be interested in this. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you, if you remember back in January, Facebook decided that you know, maybe you don't remember, you may never heard about it. But right. back in January, Facebook decided they were going to ban all ads having anything to do with crypto. In okay. cryptocurrency, they were banning all those ads. Well, now, as of a couple of days ago, they've restarted the crypto ads. Oh, really? Okay, so they they changed their mind. Yeah. So, in this article, uh, it's on Zero Hedge. It says, "What's behind Facebook's flip on crypto ads?" Um, it says, after outright banning cryptocurrency ads in January, Facebook has now backtracked, saying the ba the the ban wasn't the right approach, and not in the spirit of innovation. You think? <laughs> anyway, it says here, in the last few months, uh, we've looked at the best way to refine this policy, to allow some ads, while also working to ensure that they're safe. So starting June 26, three days ago, um, we'll be updating our policy to allow ads that promote cryptocurrency and related content from pre-approved advertisers. Okay, uh, motherfucker. So, so we'll continue to prohibit ads that promote yeah, binary I options and ICOs. No more in initial coin offerings will be going on there. Which is fine Whatever. because uh, most of those ICOs are rip-offs anyway, but... Yep. Eh, you know, whatever. Anyway... Pretty much everything's a fucking scam. Well, not everything, but but a, yeah, a lot. Much. most of those ICOs, those are, are scammers. Um, yeah. Everything's pretty much a scam. It's like trust no one. I, you know, I mean, I really like that nickname. That I really like that nickname, trust no one. Because it's seriously, seriously, do not trust anybody. Right. I mean, it, that's what it's come down to. You know, it's like unless you really fucking know somebody, and even then, you can't totally trust somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Goober. Yeah. Goober's so funny. <laughs> he is. For sure. Whitey holes are bad. Black holes are yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on, dude. Really? Anyway, it says the move to reverse the ban has sparked a speculative flurry that is a precursor to something much bigger for the beleaguered social media giant. More specifically, many think that it could lend credence to earlier rumors that Facebook might be interested in buying Coinbase. Whatever. Well, it would make sense because, right. uh, you know, the government's kind of taken over Coinbase in their own little way. Right. Uh, and 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 Facebook is CIA, so anyway. Yeah, you can't forget, you know, your, you know, it's, it's other others seem to think it's just about the money Facebook could it make on, on crypto ads. It uh, is. It's only about the money. It's fucking bullshit. You're being lied to. Period. In, in early June, earlier this month, The Economist uh, started off the speculation reporting about rumors that Facebook might be gunning for Coinbase, one of the world's largest Bitcoin exchanges, uh, but there are, has been absolutely no evidence to support that rumor. Um, 
In mid-May, rumors surfaced that Facebook was planning to launch its own cryptocurrency with a focus on cross-border payments. Uh, anyway, uh, Mines already has its own cryptocurrency. Um, okay. So it, it, it just goes on, you know, talking about that kind of stuff there. And, uh, and, 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 and I love the first comment. Tulips, get your tulips here. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Oh, They're so obvious. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let me get to a, a couple of uh, quick uh, tech tech things. All right. Because um, uh, we cause I usually do them a little later, but we'll do them right now. Um, Linux Mint 19. Uh, both Mate and Cinnamon versions were released today. Um, that's what I was talking about in that article there. Uh, uh, Rome's? Were you not listening? Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I, I use Linux Mint 18.3 on my machine, and uh, 19 came out today, but I'll, I will wait for um, it it to be linked into the, the, the software updater before I update to 19. But it looks really cool. They've, they've done some nice uh, changes and such to it. Um, I'll, I'll give you the link. You can go through and and see all the ones you've got. Uh, and all the how's cross border payments work? Yeah, um, they work really well. <laughs> With a cryptocurrency, uh, you don't have to convert anything. If if you're you know trying to convert dollars into pesos or into euros or whatever, then you, you got to go through the whole conversion process. Uh, but if it's Bitcoin or any other crypto, then uh, then you're good to go. Um, you, you, there, there's, you just it doesn't matter where you live in the world and and you know there's no conversion necessary um, unless you're converting it to a, a fiat and then of course that's 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 where governments get involved anyway so uh, yeah check out the new uh, if you're if you're just thinking about installing a Linux 19 just came out so might as well start with that if you're on a, a previous version then uh, yeah, you may want to wait a few days. Make sure everything's working right. Yeah, it's the first day of this release on that, so uh, ha hang on to that thought. But uh, I'll put the link into the blog post that you can um, uh, be, be sure and, and get that uh, information for yourself whenever. Um, okay, I added this today on on my Waterfox browser, and. Um, and, it, and it's called um, top and bottom scroll buttons. Now you know on a lot of websites you go to, they'll have like a, a scroll to top link there, um, and it's it's cool. But this is not necessary for the site to have that, and it's got not just top but also bottom. And there's a bunch of uh, various uh, options you can select, uh, not only like the size and the opacity and things like that, but uh, position where you want the buttons and um, but but it's pretty neat for uh, certain things, and especially for stuff like Twitter, because Twitter doesn't have a back to top, and they certainly don't have a bottom thing. And on pages like Twitter and Minds, and now uh, just this week on, on Freedom's Network, if you scroll to the bottom, it, it starts to load some more stuff. I guess Facebook does that too. But you could um, when, once you get to the bottom, it'll it'll load some more some more uh, posts. So. Um, uh, check it out if you got Firefox or Waterfox, maybe maybe other Mozilla-based browsers. I don't, I don't know, um, but uh, you can you can add that in, and and you'll find it as a very handy little tool. Top and bottom scroll buttons by Dimitri. So there's that for you. <laughs> See that I have another uh, another uh, tech one here. <laughs> oh yeah, big tech one. That's right. I should have mentioned this. Um, I, I've gotten I've gotten notice from uh, I've gotten notice from uh, my my hosting company for, for my websites. Uh, I use HostGator um, that they're going to be giving everybody uh, SSL. Um, so meaning that instead of really really media being HTTP, it'll be HTTPS. Because um, 
coming next month or Monday. When's the next month start? Sunday? Um, <laughs> and it doesn't say exactly what day they're going to do it. But effective July 28th, Google's Chrome browser will mark non-HTTPS sites as not secure. And I never bothered with, with getting a certificate for Real Liberty Media because I'm not collecting anybody's data. And there's no need for, for Real Liberty Media to be a secure site. Uh, it, it, there's no purpose in it. Um, but anyway, uh, Chrome's going to do that, and it could drive people away from your site, I suppose. Um, either way, so uh, after years of pushing for secure by default websites, Google will identify insecure sites in the Chrome browser beginning mid-summer. Um, let's see, D July is shaping up to be a big month for Google. Earlier this month, the company announced its speed update set to roll out in July, and today it announced, today being February 8th, okay, um, it announced that it will also mark all sites that have not migrated to HTTPS as not secure. So if you have a website, uh, you want to have that security certificate, um, secure website certificate on, on, on your thing, or else the people that use Chrome, and I know a couple of them, <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the tech questions I have to answer are about Chrome. I don't use Chrome. I don't like Chrome, but I have to know enough about Chrome to help people out. <laughs> anyway, so the, the, depending on, on who your hosting company is, they, they may be handing out uh, free security certificates for your for your website. Like I said, HostGator is doing it. I would imagine Bluehost will do the same. Uh, um, but uh, Freedoms Network obviously already has, uh, is already a secure site. But uh, I've got, I don't know, six sites that are not the yes. So anyway, there's that for you. So just, just bear that in mind if you, if you have a website um, because you are getting some percentage of your viewers using Chrome. All right, enough on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm kind of excited to, to, to try that new uh, version of Mint. But, I bet. Uh, but, yeah, uh, sounds uh, good. But like I said, I'll wait. I'll wait until it gets, you know, a couple weeks in at least. And it'll probably right. take, oh, yeah, it'll probably sure. take them a month to get it in the update manager. That um, much here. And, uh, <laughs> All right, ready for music? I am ready for music. Let's hear it. This song. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope yeah. You're having a good Friday night. Dang right it is. Or evening or morning or Saturday morning. Uh, you know, wherever you are at. Where, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Wherever you are, it's your time. Yep. <laughs> little THC. You may want a little THC. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he do. Maybe he do. Yeah, it's Willie Nelson there for Cowboy Deck with Last Man Standing. Before that, we had Beck, Bogart, and Apathy doing Superstition for Mr. Sock Puppet. And we kicked it off with the Texas Hippie Coalition. Pissed off and mad about it for Miss Beth Z. Yes, indeed. A full request set. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so uh, yeah. Anyway, cool stuff. I like it anyway. I liked it. I liked it. She liked it. I liked it. So no, we're all good. We're all good. You're damn right we are. Yeah, you know we try to be good. We're not though. <laughs> Yeah. We suck, right? Right, Goob? We suck. Oh, yeah. We do. Everyone <laughs> sucks. No, they don't. Not really. <laughs> yeah. 
No, they really don't. I don't. I don't know. Whatever they maybe they do. Maybe they don't. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I'm like, Ugh. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so like old. It gets so old sometimes. You're just like, ah, really? Not sure what to do. I'm just gonna go dance my ass off. That's what I, that's what I do. I'm like fuck it. Right. <laughs> <You know>? Damn. <laughs> Okay, you know so uh, so you, you heard about that stupid shooting at the yeah at, at, no I you know what I thought about the, I love that I'm like okay another fucking one okay I'm I'm just well, not even paying attention to it. it's, it's like no all right well anyway um Hal Hal posted a link yesterday I think it was yesterday might have been today I don't, I don't know whatever Hal posted a link uh, pointing out that. Uh, they, they had uh, done a drill for the exact thing, um, the exact event that happened just last week. So, another planned event, it seems. But um, this here on Zero Hedge, police warned multiple times about the Annapolis shooting suspect. Gazette employee took out restraining order. Yeah, he did. Well, that's what I heard. So, that's the mainstream so media thing. Restraining order. And as you always say, a restraining order don't stop shit. <laughs> Which should be obvious from this. Now, I also heard, and, and it's not in this article, I don't think, but the cops got there within one minute, within 60 seconds, dressed in full tactical gear. Does that sound possible to you? That that could have happened? Uh, no. 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 Absolutely not. Anyway, it says here in this article, the suspect in Thursday's deadly newsroom shooting had been reported to the police on at least two occasions by journalists at the paper, and that a restraining order had been taken out against him, according to a former Capital Gazette employee. Jared Ramos, 38, sued the Gazette and uh, two of its journalists in 2012 for defamation over a July 2011 article about Ramos harassing and threatening former high school classmate on Facebook. He seems to think there's some sort of relationship here that does not exist, said the woman in a harassment case and she, that she filed against Ramos. Uh, that's the guy's name, Jared Ramos. Uh, does not exist, said the woman in an arrest case. I tried to back away from it and just started getting angry, and uh, he just started getting angry and vulgar to the point I had to tell him to stop. After the case against the Gazette was thrown out, a Twitter account associated with Ramos used to send hostile, threatening tweets at Gazette employees and the judge in his case. The account had remained dormant from 2016 until yesterday, minutes before the shooting, when he wrote, Fuck you, leave me alone, Judge Moylan Frond, or whatever. Uh, and to an unused Twitter account, which appears to have been created by Ramos in 2016. Uh, right, uh, Hansel, only if they were already in the building. Which, why would they have been in the building? <laughs> No, it's not fake news. It happened. Five people got shot. That's that's true. But it's a planned event still. Um it, it they they set these people off using their, their, their mind control techniques that they do. Um that's 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 how most of these work. They actually go out and they actually kill people. Because well, they're the government and that's what they do. <laughs> Anyway, there's a whole bunch of tweets back and forth between various folks in this article. I'm not going to go through them. I'm just going to give you the link to it. But, you know, it just, it just, what, what can you buy? What can you believe anymore? It's it's all just, it's all just goofy nonsense. And, and none of it, none of it, none of it, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. Now, now I, I'm sure, and, and you've heard about this woman that's uh, been labeled as Permit Patty, <laughs> that turned in some girl for selling water, some little girl for selling water. 
Apparently, it's like some Christian Mitch. Yeah, apparently, well, I don't know about Christian, but she was apparently the CEO of um, uh, CBD Edibles and Tinctures Company. So I, I don't know if she was a Christian or not, but so she stepped down as the CEO of this cannabis company, uh, Permit Patty. <laughs> not Peppermint Patty, Permit Patty. Um, eh, it just gets more and more weird and disgusting as, as we go on. Her name is Allison Ettel. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll let you read this article too. It's on High Times, um, so it's 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 all just just nonsense. Uh, these these people, these this eight year old girl selling water. Well, who's this bothering? Uh, besides this woman, apparently, I'm thinking that everybody needs a permit to do everything. I I don't really know. All right, and let me uh. <laughs> Let me uh, give you this 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 one final link here. Um, today or yesterday, actually, the uh, band called the Interrupters, uh, who you may know from uh, Amy Allison, I mean Amy Allen, fame, um, released yes. released their brand new album, and it's all posted over on the YouTube. And 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 here's a link to the the full album stream, they call it. Um, you can, you can, Peppermint Patty was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Sir? Yeah. Anyway, um, so check out the Interrupters' new album there, and uh, we're going to check out one song from it right here, right now, live on, on the Freaker's Ball, because that's kind of, that's kind of, it's kind of something we do. We love Amy Allen, have for years, and here she is with her band, the Interrupters, doing a song called She's kerosene. Bambalam. Oh yeah, Spider Bait there, Black Betty uh, Biker music video version. Uh, anyway, before that we had. Going Down, as performed by Jeff Beck, Beth Hart, and Tal Welkenfield. Um, yeah, beauties, beauties, Tal and Beth, absolutely. And we kicked it off there with the Interrupters featuring another beauty, Amy Allen, uh, uh, doing She's Kerosene. Not the best Sweet. version. Well, maybe not the best version, but it's a good version. I like it. I like it. Oh, man. Um, anyway, uh, t tomorrow at noon Eastern will be um, Flash and Vin E on the dark table. Uh, on Sunday at noon Eastern will be me right here on RLM Radio doing the blues. Yeah. And we'll play some trivia here in the chat. Hal Anthony yeah. will follow me up uh, with Behind the Wood Shed opening up the big old can of whoopee in the ass. But there is no more road less traveled. No. Uh, Gary, Gary L. has called her quits, uh, at least for now, at least on a permanent yeah. basis. They they may do uh, intermittent shows. Uh, Grammy will okay. be... Gra Gra <laughs> blasted you. Um, I don't know about that. Oh, uh, with the motorcycles. Anyway, um, but uh, Grammy will be back on Wednesday at our normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, with the rocket chair. But anybody else wants to do a show... We 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 we'd love to have Feel you here free. doing a show. You know, a lot of y'all got a lot of great opinions there, or at least opinions anyway, in the chat. How about sharing them with the world instead of keeping them to to this little crew? Uh, you know, get 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 your voice on out there. You know, make yourself known. You you got stuff you want to say. You feel you're right. You feel you're uh, you got something important you want to share. Information that that should be known. Doing broadcast is easy, right? It is. Once you get the hang of it, it's, it's like riding a bike. Even easier, because cause you won't fall down yeah. and scrape your, you won't scrape your knee. Right, you won't scrape your knees or anything. Unless you, like, <laughs> wake up or get up and trip on your fucking headset cord. 
Yeah, damn right. So that could uh, happen. Anyway, you just let me know if you, if you want to do a show. If you're if you're listening to this, you broad, got something to say, hey. If if you're listening to this broadcast, right? if, <laughs> if you're if you listening to the broadcast later, not here on on Real Liberty Media. Uh, just come over to reallibertymedia.com dot com and and click on the uh, contact link page there, and send me a message that way, or come into the chat, whichever works. Yep. And I think that's I think we're good. Got anything else? I think we're good. Yeah, right. we're good. Peace.